Hello, my name is Doug Farrick, and I'm going to describe research that uh, we're doing in my laboratory and that I re presented at the repeat repetitive non-globular proteins uh, meeting on March 30th. So my laboratory studies uh, proteins that have a regular linear repetitive architecture. Four of those are shown in this slide. And uh, we're interested in their folding, their energetics, and their cooperativity. So uh, the presentation uh, today is going to focus on equilibrium aspects of folding, in particular, how we can use these systems to study cooperative folding quantitatively. So for a number of years, we've learned that Linear repeat proteins such as the anchor domain from the notch receptor and leucine-rich receptors, leucine-rich uh, repeat proteins, as shown here, fold uh, by equilibrium all or none reactions. So three reactions are shown here, three folding transitions, where we measured fraction folding by uh, circular dichroism, measuring alpha helix, uh, and by tryptophan fluorescence. And we see sharp all or none transitions in each of these cases. Um, this was rather surprising to us because proteins that have this kind of structure lack long-range contacts and they're architecturally modular. So we were expecting modular thermodynamics. But the fact that we see this high level of cooperativity, especially for the YAP-M leucine-rich repeat domain uh, at almost 360 residues, was surprising to us and we wanted to learn how this cooperativity worked. So I'm going to show you a way that we use repeat proteins to think about cooperativity. In the proteins on the previous slide, though each structural unit, each repeat, looked identical, looked similar in terms of ribbons, they're actually quite different in sequence. So to simplify things, my laboratory and the laboratories of others, including Lynn Reagan and Andreas Plutkin's lab, have relied on a, a modular design where we use repeats of identical sequence and array them. This simplifies the thermodynamics and requires us to uh, account just for an intrinsic energy between the repeats and for a single interfacial energy between each unit. And using constructs that have different repeat numbers, we can uh, quantify uh, the intrinsic energies and resolve them from the coupling energies. One important aspect of the work that I presented is that we have used capping repeats to polarize the ends of the molecule. Those are shown as blue and red N and C repeats. And those are important to keep molecules in solution. So in each of these uh, studies that we do, we test whether or not these molecules are soluble using analytical ultracentrifugation. But with this approach, we can um, take measured stabilities and relate them to linear equations describing stability in terms of intrinsic and interfacial interactions and quantify them. So um, we have done that, and the results for one type of repeat, um, the uh, anchoring domain of uh, a consensus anchoring domain where we've used identical repeats is shown uh, here. So for anchoring repeats, we um, find that each of the units is very intrinsically unstable. So 5.2 kilocalories per mole energy cost for folding, but that the interactions between the repeats are intrinsically uh, are interfacially very stable. So the interfaces um, have a 12 and a half kilocalorie per mole uh, cohesion between the two of them. Work from Lynn Regan's lab has also applied this type of analysis to another helical class of proteins, the TPR proteins, which are 34 residue proteins, much like the anchoring repeats. Uh, and they find the model with an intrinsic and an interfacial term works very well, but that the energy parameters are divided very differently. In Lynn's TPR work, she finds that the intrinsic energies are almost neutral, so the units can form almost on their own, but that the interfaces are also much less stable. They only stick together with about a 4.5 kcal per mole interaction energy. So we wanted to use structures like this and other structures to try and learn why these differences exist between these two otherwise similar proteins. So we've undertaken another number of studies like that. 
Uh, one of them is uh, using an interesting class of proteins that we have found, or that Jake Merrill, the graduate student in my lab, has found, which is like TPRs, but it has longer uh, alpha helices. And, and shown here is a crystal structure of one of these proteins that Jake just produced and just saw the structure of. And you can see that it looks very similar to the TPRs, but it has longer helices. So this provides us with an excellent platform for learning about differences that structural changes give to uh, cooperativities. And um, so we're working on that problem now, along with other types of uh, repeat proteins. Um, and we're finding interesting differences in trying to correlate them to structure. So um, in summary, uh, we've learned that a simple uh, nearest neighbor energy model or icing analysis um, can be applied to these linear repeat proteins, um, capped linear repeat proteins, and we can quantify free energies of coupling and uh, intrinsic free energies. Uh, and that we see a broad range of these for different proteins. In data that I haven't shown in this short presentation, um, we see that cooperativity is greatest for leucine-rich repeat proteins, um, also fairly high, but not as high for anchor and repeat proteins, um, and is decreased for TPR proteins, both 34 and 42 residue TPR proteins. A question that we want to address next, and one that I think is very important, is what kinds of interactions contribute to these differences in cooperativity? Um, is it buried surface? Is it polar interactions, charged interactions? So we're actively working on that, and I hope that when we get the answer to these questions, we'll better understand protein folding and allosteric changes, and also protein misfolding and aggregation in disease. So um, uh, finally, I'd like to show um, some of the important people who have done the work. Um, the work was done by Twerl Axel, shown in the picture here with background work. Jake Merrill um, uh, did a lot of the work with TPRs. And uh, Tui Dow and Katie Geiger have also done important work with um, leucine rich repeats and tail repeats to help us uh, define cooperativity in different systems.